What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Trailer Talk. This is, I believe, week five, right, McNeil? Week five, that's All right. It is week five. Like I said, welcome back. We got four movies to talk about, as always. We got the two movies that are coming out this week are actually so big. We're going to go ahead and wait for them towards the end, because we're probably going to end up taking most of the time up talking about them. So, and as the saying goes, save the best for last. So, um, as always, I am Michael, and as always with me, we have McNeil. What is up? What's up, what's up, Mike? What is up? I am ready to get into some of these movies, especially this first one, which uh, only recently we watched the trailer, because this trailer literally came out, uh, what was it, today or yesterday or the day before? It was couple, literally yeah, a couple of days ago. Last, you know, It came out in the last couple of days. And that movie is The Family, with Robert De Niro uh -huh. and Michelle Pfeiffer and Diana Agron. And, of course, Tommy Lee Jones. But um, And right off the bat, I mean, with this movie, reading the cast, I'm like, okay, we got kind of a big cast. So, and you know, any, you know, you as the viewers, you know how movies can get when you have a star-studded cast like this. They end up sucking. But... <laughs> This one looks pretty good. I mean, um, it looks like that Tommy Lee Jones, um, God rest his soul, I think he's going to be dead here shortly. I don't want to see that, but he's definitely getting old. But uh, this movie, the whole time I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, this is probably going to be extremely funny. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, <laughs> just uh, getting out of the mob is not an easy thing to do. Plus, I mean, just with with the cast itself, I'm just really looking forward to this movie. Yeah, and it looked like they they took they took the uh, you know the harsh realities of the mob and kind of put a funny spin on it, which I think is kind of cool. So, and but if you watch the trailer, you're definitely going to get the sense that yeah, this could be funny, but it's probably going to be a dark comedy. So, I mean, you know, keep 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 that in mind. But uh, well, what, what I like about it is that. Uh, you know, as they move from place to place, trying to hide from the mob, this family, all they know is that mob mentality. So they're constantly doing the same things, beating people up, uh, bribing, extortion, you know, blowing it's, things up. It's funny. I, mean, I know the whole time they were doing it that I'm like, that's funny as crap. I mean, even their little daughter was sitting there beating the crap out of some poor little guy because he was flirting with her. And I right. thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, that's that's just... <laughs> That's just that mob, New York, whatever, big city mentality. So it <laughs> it looks funny. So I think I got I got uh I got some high hopes for this movie, especially when you got Robert De Niro and uh, well I would say Michelle Pfeiffer, but ever since Dark Shadows, it's kind of like so. But uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Robert De Niro, can't miss it. No, um, no definitely check it out. Definitely. So let's go ahead and move it on to our Crap Fest movie of the day. Well, what did I say? Day of this day, episode. Day, night. Right. <laughs> Crap Fest movie of this episode. White House Down. I know every single woman right now is cursing me because I just said that White House Down was terrible and it has their dream man in it, Channing Tatum. Um, I don't care. Channing Tatum is terrible. If you guys... <laughs> There's if you only guys... one movie. There's yeah. only one movie that I enjoyed with Channing Tatum in it. Which one? That was 20, 21 Jump Street. Exactly, but thanks to Jonah Hill. And, right. um, and Ice Cube, of course. Um, but <laughs> the... Uh, I've, I've, I mean, if you've watched our... If you've listened to our podcast of the past, you know I don't like Channing Tatum. I mean, I called him out two or three times, and he still hasn't showed up, by the way. Channing yeah, Tatum, I mean, what, let's what go. What the crap is that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Thanks for, you know, standing me up, you ass. You had a date with my <laughs> fist. But anyways, um, <laughs> it's just a crap fest, and to be honest, what was funny was we had the uh, poster for um, Olympus Has Fallen, and not even a week later, a White House Down poster came to, up. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, why, why are we going to have... two movies of the same premise? And you the know only what? time 
Go the ahead, only time ahead. I know of that 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 has worked was 1998, Armageddon, and then a few months later, Deep Impact. Yeah, and you know what? The movies were were actually pretty damn pretty damn far apart. So, um, and this this movie though is it looks stupid. Like I said, it looks like a crap fest. I saw Olympus Has Fallen was actually a was actually a pretty good movie. Um, if you're into the you know '90s cheese action one-liners, by the way, these one-liners were actually original. You'll like the movie. It's good. It's fun. You know, you you'll enjoy it. This one just looks like Chatting Tatum in a tank top, and he's got some dirt on him, and grab a couple guns, and him and Jamie Fox who plays the president, just, I don't know, raise hell. So well, the I way mean, it, the way it looks to me, it's like it's, he's trying to force the comedy aspect of it. And you can't force it into something like that. No, you can't. And the only reason he worked comedy-wise in 21 Jump Street is, like I said, he had Jonah Hill. He Jamie Foxx is not a comedic actor. I'm sorry. And to be honest, I really don't care for Jamie Foxx. And I just don't think these two together will be able to bring that comedic aspect to the movie that this movie is definitely going to need. So, and uh, you know, keep in mind this is our opinion based on the trailers. So, I mean, it it, it could be a great movie. Not only know, trailers not... though, but movies we've seen with these people before. True. So, but you know, I mean, for some reason, it could be just blow us out of the water, and we will, you know. <laughs> We will take the hits and say, hey, oh, yeah. we were wrong. We have no problem yeah. doing that when, when the podcast comes around and we got to do reviews. Right. Um, <laughs> another downfall of this movie I want to point out, what the hell is up with that runtime? 137 minutes of Channing Tatum. You know they are trying to get that that <sighs> freaking mom mom money. They're just I mean, trying to see. rake in that money from them. That... that uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, well, you see the crowd that that came to Olympus has fallen. You know, it was a lot of the action crowd and everything else. And you might have yeah. had a few of the females come in there for Gerard Butler, but uh, maybe. But uh, I mean, this they're marketing toward females. Oh yeah, more definitely. so. Than, I mean, and then they're trying to draw in the regular crowd with the action. Exactly. So I think this movie is actually destined to fail. So, um, I just oh my gosh, I really don't. I mean, looking at this, I mean, they got Richard Jenkins. I mean, he's a good actor. We got Maggie Gyllenhaal. She's always phenomenal. James Woods. Uh, nice to see you crawl out of your rock. Um, <laughs> ooh, piece of candy. Yeah, ooh, piece of candy. Um, but, I mean, it's a mediocre cast in a crappy written comedy or action movie. See, I even said comedy because that's what it looked like <laughs> in a freaking trailer. <laughs> they're trying to make it a comedy. Right. But, um, it's just, I don't know. I think it's destined to fail. But like, I, like McNeil said, we could be wrong. So we'll just have to wait and see, people. Wait and see. <laughs> but uh, you, you know what's going to be a good comedy, though? What's that? This is the end. Oh, this my is a God. Movie, this is a comedy we know that's going to work. Okay. We know. Well, I mean, you got to look at it. You got so many comedic geniuses in the movie. Geniuses. Yes. <laughs> and all of them feeding all these off people. of each other. Oh, uh, these! It, it, it was funny. Yeah, like they're playing themselves. I mean, you can't. <laughs> yep. Where has this movie been? To be honest, when I heard about it, I'm like, why the hell has this movie not been made? Well, how can how can you fuck that up? I mean, they give you the basic premise and then say, okay, just do your thing. Just be yeah. yourselves, exactly. basically. And it exactly. looks, and it looks like they're gonna nail. I mean, it looks like they hit the nail on the head. I mean, it looks so freaking funny. All variations of the trailers, it looked funny. Even the latest one where they had when <laughs> when uh when Emma Watson robs them with a fuck. What was it? An axe? That was mm -hmm. hilarious. Hermione just stole our shit. Yeah. It <laughs> Danny McBride is like, he just sits there. He's like, yeah, her, we just got robbed by Hermione. I mean, that was just, that's just, she runs in like, give me all your shit. And they're like, no, we are not going to give you all of our shit. There's five of us and one of you. And then like, she beats the crap out of Seth Rogen. I mean, that was just hilarious. But uh, I love this cast. I mean, 
Um, there's only a couple in here that I think were thrown in more because, I mean, they work well off of the main actors. Jay Baruchel. I, I'm sorry if I'm... Baruchel. Thank you. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. And Craig Robinson. I mean, these guys are hilarious. Um, I, don't I mean, know, we could like, have definitely look. seen different characters. I mean, different actors. Um, one that for sure I know could have actually played, you actually see him in the trailer, Michael Sarah. I think he yeah. would have actually been good as one of the actual act main characters in the story. Right. I think he would have, he would have done awesome. And then there's another one in this movie, Paul Rudd. I definitely think Paul Rudd would have been awesome. But... I don't know, maybe maybe the fact that he's just getting too old or they just want a little bit you know, not you know, not as old as a crowd in this movie. Aiming towards a younger crowd, but I mean I mean not bad. So this is uh Seth Rogan's teaming up with Evan Goldberg. If you guys don't know, he did uh Super Bad and uh Pineapple Express, you know, all those movies we love. And um mm -hmm. I mean Seth Rogan freaking wrote the dang thing. And I believe um, he also wrote Fifty Fifty, which turned out to be a fantastic movie. Right. So, I mean, I have no doubt that this movie is going to be successful, and I know it's going to make the big bucks. And get, I'm getting on Blu-ray, and I'm going to pre-order right now. So that's, <laughs> that's the kind of mood I'm in right now. So, I right. mean, McNeil, what do you think? I mean, do you think this is going to live up to, I mean, the hype, live up to the names that are starring in it? Yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth. With comedy, it's really hit and miss. And and there's the most recent movie that I was just laugh my ass off was Twenty One Jump Street. Oh yeah, and that was Jonah Hill. Of course, Jonah Hill is in this movie. Johnny Tatum every, too. Johnny Tatum has a very tiny role. Right, but with within this movie, just imagine them feeding off of each other a lot like we do, you know, with our podcasts and such. I mean, just. To multiply their genius exponentially. Oh yes, oh I, I yes. Just, I, I think we got a winner here. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna freaking enjoy it. I know I am. <laughs> I can't wait to go watch it. I'm just gonna freaking uh, the whole time. I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and do some like ab crunches or something because I know I'm gonna be like <laughs> sore as shit from how hard I'm gonna be laughing. But anyways, <laughs> uh, high hopes. Um. High expectations, and no doubt in my mind, it will be amazing. So, but uh, all right, let's go ahead and move it on to the last topic of our episode the, of this episode. The Holy episode Grail, uh, biggest movie, one of the biggest movies of the summer, even though summer is just now starting. Um, other movie being World War Z, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Man <laughs> Actually, of Steel. Superman. Oh, 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 my God. Okay, I wasn't even this excited when I heard about Superman Returns. And that turned out to be bullshit anyways and terrible as fuck. Crap, but yeah. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Um, well, I mean, just, I mean I'll, I'll just put the quote out there from Ted, you know. Brandon Routh, you know, when you get on an iconic character... I mean, you, you want to try to play Superman and... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, um... Oh, gosh, I'm so ready for Man of Steel. You know, was, I actually... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. When I first heard it was Henry Cavill, um, mm -hmm. I really was confused because I really could not see him as Superman. But the more and more we saw him in the trailers and the more in-depth and more heartfelt and, you know, warm trailers we saw, you know, more in-depth. I mean, just, I'm already hooked on it. I'm hooked on yeah. Henry Cable. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 100%. Yeah, I'm thinking nailed it. I'm thinking, and from the trailers, and granted, the trailers can show everything and then the rest of the movie would be crap. But, yeah. but uh, from the trailers, I'm... I don't see how he hasn't nailed this character. No. And then that I remember um the the day uh I think you told me, I believe, when the four minute trailer came out mm -hmm. and first of all, four minutes, that's ridiculous. But I checked it out and 
I got goosebumps. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm gonna be a complete girl about this, but I got fucking goosebumps. I mean, <laughs> Superman. I've always been a huge Superman fan. Um, what also turned me on to this movie was the fact that they're keeping a lot of the traditional aspects of the original Superman. Not the BS Superman they have nowadays where he's impervious to everything. This Superman is cool. Um, it's like they're making a mixture of the modern day and the older Superman. Yes, and I love it. You know what? Yeah, yeah he doesn't have his underpants. Sweet. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so what? Uh, I mean, all these diehard fans want to want to start bashing the movie because Chill the he doesn't hell have the red underwear. I mean, yeah. come on. That 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 is minuscule in the Superman universe. Now, and then they got angry about the kryptonite. I understand. Kryptonite's fine. But kryptonite I, I was will afraid be. that it if, will they, be there. if they open the door... Yeah, just not this episode, you know, this um, movie. We, we don't know. It's going to probably pop up the next movie or something, or in the Justice League movie. But... I was actually afraid that, I'm still afraid that they might take the kryptonite too far like they did in that stupid, horrible show, Smallville. And make, like they did in the comic books, just a whole, just a array of freaking colors. Right. And they make a it rainbow. all confusing. And it gets, Superman should be weak from three things. Green kryptonite, magic, and his human frailty mental frailty that is it right okay don't make multiple colors and well this kryptonite takes away his powers this kryptonite makes him evil i don't want to see that crap don't want to just well red kryptonite was always a part of it i I understand it just took took away his morality and i understand that but then if you you want to keep some of the traditional colors fine whatever but don't go go too far with it well that's like you said in smallville they had blue, black, gold. Yeah, get the get the fuck out of here. Kiss my ass with that shit. You know, that's why I came to resent Superman, uh, the New Age Superman, because they took him, and it seemed like a lot of the writers got really lazy. Yeah. And what they did was, oh, well, you know, he's not weak to this anymore. He's Superman. He's a god. He's not a god. He's an alien. People need to remember mm-hmm. that. Okay, he's a god. He may seem godlike to us because of his imma- immaculate abilities, but he is not a god. Okay, Thor's a god. I'm what not I'm saying he's for. stronger. I'm just saying he is not a god. He's going to have weaknesses, and people need to remember that. Don't just say he's Superman. He's godlike. He shouldn't have weaknesses. Okay, that's just right. lazy writing. Don't be it lazy. Is. And that's what really turned me off to New Age Superman. I love. Love old school Superman. Love right. until the day I die. But let's see. What I love about this trailer is that this final trailer, it was just you know a musical score and it showed a lot of the action. You know? Yeah, and it gets you ready. And, <laughs> and it, you're going to see the War of Krypton. You're going to see Krypton be destroyed. You're going to see Zod fight Jor-el. Yes. You're going to see Zod come to Earth with a fucking army. This, this, people, this isn't Superman Returns where you see a couple glimpses or flashbacks, or this is not going to be like the, uh, God bless, you know, um, God bless his soul, uh, the, you know, the big 80s movies with Christopher Reeves and stuff, um, not saying that because I love Christopher Reeves. I love his mo- his Superman movies, but right. you know where they show glimpses and flashbacks, and you get bits and pieces. No, they are showing you. Okay, this this is an origin movie. People are not going to say it is, but this is an origin movie. This is this is the beginning of not only Superman, but Justice League. So we're starting over, people. I mean, you got to start is... off on Krypton. You got to start off on Krypton, and you see Superman get born. Yes. Kal-El is born in this movie. Yes. You see, at, like McNeil said, the destruction. We're going to put the latest trailer, but also we're going to put that f- cool 14-minute uh, four, featurette yes. in the uh, yes. description yes. box Definitely. as well because you need to watch that. I'm telling you, you're going to get hooked and you're going to want to see it Friday. So, But um, like I said, this is this is the beginning. This is this is DC's. This, this, this movie right here, 
This is how much Zack Snyder has on his shoulders. This movie right here is going to make uh, Warner Brothers decide whether they're going to go forward with the Justice League movie or they're going to take more time to develop other characters first. Okay? And now right. if this movie doesn't do good, it's going to be a while before we see Justice League. So not only right. do we have faith in this movie because of what we've seen through trailers, but we have faith because Zack Snyder is, is a highly intelligent director and he's got a lot riding on his sol- shoulders. So I Speaking really of don't... Zack Snyder... Go ahead. Um, from what I hear, he has now been hired by DC to take over writing the new Superman. Yes. Yeah. Um, the story about that, I believe, is that he showed the final version of the final edited version of the movie to the heads of Warner Brother, or um, was it DC or Warner Brother? Whatever. Uh, DC, I believe. And they went ahead and asked him to be the head writer for the new, you know, Superman series. So I'm taking books. that as a huge sign right and there. And first off, DC doesn't take that shit lightly. Okay, it's mm-hmm. Superman. We're talking about the first superhero ever. Okay. I mean, we're talking about their their backbone. Yes, their and we're talking spine, about... I mean. People also need to understand that the Superman symbol is the second most known symbol in the world. Directly behind the Christian cross. cross. So, this is something they take seriously. They're not going to ask someone who fucked up their movie. Um, They're not going to ask J.J. Abrams. We love you, J.J. Abrams. You know, it's a mistake. We understand. We forget. We do love you, J.J. We do love you for what you're doing with Star Trek. But, um... You know, they wouldn't the just give this role to just anyone. I mean, this is, it's Superman, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I have, no, I have, and I mean, look at this cast. Look at this freaking cast. I mean, that's Russell just more Crow. than enough. Screw Diane Henry Lane, Cable. Kevin Costner. Don't even look, Henry don't even look at Henry Cable. Just look at everybody else. Amy Adams. You got Michael Shannon. Diane Lane, which I have loved since the freaking 80s. Mm-hmm. Okay, Russell Crowe. I mean, come on. Kevin look at Costner. this. Look at this. This guy, uh, Kevin Costner, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Now here's another guy that I think needs to be getting more and more roles. Christopher Milne. Yes, I saw that him man. in the trailer. I was like, wait, isn't that him? Yes, <laughs> that man is a great actor. Okay. He, he, we saw him most recently in Please. 42. Yes, that man is a great actor. Okay. We need to see more roles, Hollywood. Please, get them more yeah. roles. But, um, yeah, I mean, and Michael Shannon is Zod, man. He just looks so good, and his voice was just so creepy and gave you goosebumps, and you're like, oh, shit. And, you know, honestly, you know, the way he was yelling on the screen in, in the trailers and stuff, you know, talking about kal Yeah. feel I got from that was Khan when he showed his madness. You know, the way Benedict Cumberbatch captured the essence of Khan. Dude, I know. I mean, these actors are just freaking... Oh, man. We just... I mean... I don't know. We just... We're starting to see um, actors... Good... The amazing actors start to get recognition. In, uh, in yeah, I, I think I think what it is, actually, we're starting to see the next generation of Daniel Day-Lewis and you know, people like that that are always on top. You know, yes. Always amazing. And, you know what I mean? I also would like to give a shout out to the freaking these freaking casting directors. Man, they just been making some smart moves, man. Hell smart yeah. moves. I mean, yeah. Star Trek, Man of Steel. Um uh I was going to say another one, Django. I mean, these people are just doing a great job with films nowadays. So, casting directors, yay. But uh yes, we are excited about Man of Steel. Um well, we took longer than I thought. Uh, Man of Steel. We are excited about Man of Steel. Can't wait to to watch it. It's going to be awesome. I'm probably going to end up watching it eight times. So, And uh, when that releases this week, we will have a review for you guys the following week. That is next week, next Tuesday morning, we will have that podcast up with the Man of Steel. And this is the end review. So uh, come back for that. Uh, we want to thank you guys for... Uh, 
tuning in, checking out episode 5 of our trailer talk. It's been fun. We laughed, we cried, we threatened We sang Channing a few Tatum. songs. And <laughs> what did you say? We, we sang a few songs. Sang a few, <laughs> few songs, threatened Channing Tatum again. And uh, we just had all around fun doing it. So I want to thank you guys again for tuning in. If you like the video, comment, like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and we'll see you kitties next time. Bye. Bye, YouTube. Peace.